Namaste my friends. Welcome to another 90 minute full body functional yin yoga sequence. Just as a recap for the style of yoga that I teach, yin yoga, functional yin yoga. In yoga what we're trying to achieve is the balance or the harmonization of the flow of chi or energy throughout the body. And in yin yoga we achieve this with long-held static postures where we relax the muscles and seek to apply a healthy level of stress to the connective tissues, so the ligaments, the tendons, the joint capsules, even the joints and the bones themselves. In terms of functional yoga or functional yin yoga, all we really mean there is that our primary concern, in fact our only concern, is the effect that the yoga is having on us. If it's having the right effect in the right target area that we're working with, then that's fine. We don't worry about the position of the, the hands or the feet. Um, so long as we're getting the posture and we're not injuring ourselves, that's all we're concerned with. So once again, welcome to another 90 minute full body functional yin yoga sequence. You might find it helpful to have a bolster to hand if you haven't got one, then maybe just um, Grab a couple of pillows or some blocks. I hope you enjoy this sequence. We're going to start the sequence with um, just a little bit of breathing to bring our focus back into ourselves and ensure that we're on the same plane. So just bringing yourself into a comfy seat position. Legs can be crossed or you could be sat on your heels in Caesar style. Just wherever you can be comfortable for a good three minutes. Getting comfortable, settling in, keeping the back as straight as possible. This just helps with the flow of breath and energy throughout the body. And then ever so gradually, just closing the eyes, just bringing the eyes to a close. Just breathing normally. In and out through the nostrils, always in and out through the nostrils. And as we settle, just becoming aware of the ground beneath us, the ground that supports us, the ground and the earth upon which we walk every day. Taking our attention up through the body, bringing our focus to the sky above us, a reminder of the infinite possibilities of the universe. We're bringing our attention back to somewhere in the middle, into the space that we're in, just aware of the room or the space that we're in today. And gradually bringing the attention in from the sides of that room towards ourselves. Maybe feeling the touch of the clothing on our body, touch of the air on the skin. And just feeling the air passing over the nostrils as we breathe in. And as we exhale, breathing in, up into the nostrils, back of the throat, into the lungs, filling the lungs, before we exhale again. If we have an intention for our practice today, now would be a good time to set it or remind ourselves of it. If not, one will become apparent as we practice. Just a couple of breaths here now. And 
in your own time now, just looking down to the map before we blink the eyes open. No rush. Getting ready for our first posture. So, for our first posture, the target area is going to be the groin muscles on the inside of the, the thighs here. Sometimes hard to distinguish them from the hamstrings because they are adjacent to each other. We can never completely isolate them, but certainly our focus of attention should be on the groins. So, we're going to come into start by coming into child's pose, just sitting on the, the heels. This time the knees are going to be spread wide. And then just get comfortable here. You should perhaps be already able to feel something in the, the groin muscles on the inside of the thighs there. You shouldn't feel any discomfort in the ankles. If you do, you just need to adjust. Or we can put a bit of a blanket behind there. So from our seated position in child's pose, we're already going to feel some tension in the groin. But we're going to walk forward onto our elbows, hands out in front, just adjust. And we're going to feel a little bit more stress and tension here in the, in the groin muscles. We're now going to take our attention to those muscles and relax them. Just take our focus and attention there, take our mind there, and almost manually ask the muscles to relax. As we do, this makes it possible for the stress to pass to the connective tissues, which is those that we want to be working with in yin yoga. And so here at our first point of resistance, our first edge, just moving forward slightly until we feel the stress in the groin ease off and then move the hips back until we can feel that tension in the groin again. And this is our position for frog. Adjusting slightly if we need to. We can move the feet in or out. Just experiment, see what works for you today. The key is, are we getting that stretch in the connective tissue, in the groin area, and are our muscles relaxed? Once we're in a comfortable and effective position, we find stillness. And in yin yoga, we find stillness so that we can start to understand how our body and our mind are responding to the posture. We learn to listen to the effects of the posture. Firstly, physically. Maybe we can feel a stretch in the connective tissue all the way from the inside of the knees up the inside of the thigh. Maybe if we need to adjust a little bit that's fine, but no fidgeting. Although we can't feel it, what we know is that in terms of stress on the healthy stress on the bones, we're putting some healthy stress here on the inside of the knees, femur, pelvis, hips and even the lumbar. So again just enjoying that stillness, bringing the attention in, inwards. Listening to those physical experiences. Also being open to any other experiences, perhaps where there's a, an emotional response to some of the postures we'll be doing, different ones for different people.
Maybe as our edge moves, we, we move with it. Bring the chest down. Some people like to bring the chest up. Just what works for you. Coming back to the target area again. Just enjoying that stillness. Breathing in, breathing out, relaxed muscles. Work in the connective tissues. Just another breath here. And in your own time, just coming out of that posture, gently bringing the knees in, always moving slowly and gently after the postures that we're doing in, because we've been there for some time, and some of our connective tissue, even muscles and joints may be quite or feel quite fragile. So they just need a little time to adjust. Coming on to the back. Just having a quick rebound, or as one of our teachers, Bernie Clark calls it, an echo. Just feeling the echo of the posture. Taking the mind to the area we've just been working and just seeing what's different what's different about it so in our next posture we're going to be working with the hip flexors so the muscles down the front of the hips here so we're going to turn around we're going to bring the left leg in front of us, take the right leg back. Now, this left foot here can be as far forward or back as you need. The knee can be in or out to suit you. Our interest here is this hip flexor muscle here, or this area here. So, providing we're targeting that, then we adjust the, the leg and the front foot here to suit us and make us comfortable for the several minutes that we're going to be here. So moving to our edge, that first point of resistance, we find that but then take our attention to the target area, the right hip flexor, and relax that muscle. Relaxing the muscle, we allow the stress or the tension that was in that muscle to transfer to the connective tissue, which is what we want to be working with in yin yoga. allowing that to happen. As we do that we may find that the edge moves and we may therefore want to adjust our position to keep up with that edge. We want to keep the body as far up as we can. If you're not comfortable up here you can come down onto the elbows but do try and stay up on the hands. To support yourself with a block or bolsters if you need to. Even the position of the head may have some effect for you. So just explore that. And then once we're comfortable, we just find some stillness. And again, we use that stillness to fully experience the posture.
physical sense in the right hip flexor we can now maybe feel the connective tissue join that stretch in the hip flexor region maybe it's also moving up towards the, the stomach or to the side of the body in terms of the bones here we're applying a nice healthy stress to the toes, ankles, knee, femur, pelvis, hip joint, even the lumbar. Again experiment with the position of the head. Always interesting to understand what reaction you get by moving the body. From here we're going to stay on the same side, stay in this position, and all we're going to do is walk those hands forward. Maybe coming forward onto the elbows first. We've now shifted our attention, so our target area now is the glute. The glute on the left hand side. So as we do with all of these postures, we just settle in towards our edge, first point of resistance. Never really ought to be more than 60 or 70 percent of our full range of motion in you. So, certainly, when we're first into a posture, we may be at less than that. And when we're at our edge, we take our attention to the target area, so the left glute in this case, the butt muscle, and just relax. Relax the muscle. Allow the stress and tension from the muscle to pass to the connective tissue just where we want it. As it does so, we may find that the edge moves and we need to adjust a little bit. We can either come forward a little bit more, or for some people it may be more effective to move the torso and the arms to one side or the other. So just explore a little, don't fidget for too long, just explore a couple of options and just make sure that we're keeping, keeping together with that edge. Getting some good healthy stretch or tension in the connective tissue. Moving to stillness, in that stillness, opening the mind to the experience of the posture. Connective tissue, stretching in the target area of the glute, the left glute, but maybe also just up the left hand side of the body. Maybe also in the, the right glute sometimes, and perhaps at the top of the right leg, top of the groin almost. But try and tune into your experience because it, it may well be different and it probably will be different from my experience and from those of any other students. And this is what we're trying to do, one of the things we're trying to do in Yin is learn how to tune in and respond to both our body and our mind. In your own time. No need to rush, just slowly coming out of posture. 
Now we're going to swap to the other side. Right, the left hip flexor being the right leg in front, taking the left leg behind. Again, remembering that the position of the knee and the ankle are entirely up to you. Focus is on the left hip flexor. Turn around for you to make that easier. So our focus is on the left hip flexor. In here, this region. Adjusting. And just settling in towards our edge. First point of resistance. Making the adjustments. And as we find that edge, taking our attention to the target area, the left hip flexor, relaxing the muscle, and allowing the tension there to move into the connective tissue. Exactly where we want it. As we do that, maybe the body yields a little bit. Stay up. So we might want to support ourselves on blocks, or we can just open up the chest. We can take the head back a little bit. It opens up nicely at the point here. Or we can just stay where we were. Moving to stillness. Opening up the mind to the experience. Feeling the stretch in the connective tissue. Each side is different. You may find it extends further down this leg. Could it go down to the knee? Some students so that they can feel some connective tissue stretch right down to the big toe or up that front of that leg. Through the hip flexor, maybe into the stomach, the rectus abdominis or the obliques. You may feel something here in the, the right glute. But our focus here is the hip flexor. more than a physical response to this posture for you. Very often with postures where we're opening up the chest, students can feel some kind of emotional release. And if that's the case today, then just let it happen. Just enjoy it, don't attach to it. As we did on the other side now, we're going to simply walk the hands forward. We're now turning our attention to the glute on the right hand side. We're going to do that by just walking forward, coming onto our elbows. And now you'll feel the tension or the stretch, the stress moving from the hip flexor over to the glute on the other side of the body. Settling in, this point of resistance, the edge. Take the focus to the right glute, relaxing the muscle. Maybe feeling the body yield just a little bit of the stress, the healthy stress and tension moves to the connective tissue, the ligaments, the tendons, joint capsules. And 
and if it does we may need to adjust slightly and just follow that edge so we might want to bring our body further down towards the mat or we may want to move the, the torso and the arms to one side or the other in many of our postures torso and the arms act as levers to increase or decrease the sensation that we're experiencing so always worth remembering that we can sort of throttle into and out of a posture using the position of our upper body and arms and sometimes our legs and just enjoying the stillness ensuring that muscles relaxed in the right glutes Steady breaths. In and out through the nostrils. Got a minute left now, so I'll just leave you in silence. Use the time to introspect a bit. No rush, just because there's a bell, but just letting us know that it's time in your own time to come out of that posture gently. And maybe just lying back or lying back, supported on the arms as I am, just taking us into that rebound. We've done a couple of postures in a row there without a break, so we've got plenty to contemplate, just lying on our back, taking our mind our attention to the areas we've worked, the hip flexors and the glutes. And seeing if we can sense what's different in that area. How different do they feel? What are we feeling in that target area? Maybe just another breath here. Coming up ready for our next posture. For our next posture, we're going to be working the, the quads, so the large muscles on the front of the leg. And we're going to do that one side at a time. So whichever side you want to start with, I'm going to start by taking the left leg back so I'm just taking the left leg back here, folding it back, foot can be out to the side or tucked behind. Probably start with it tucked just behind. Already we'll feel the engagement of the, the quad muscle here. Most of us will do. Now then, maybe just coming back onto the elbows. Uh, this may be enough for us. If you've got very tight quads, this may be enough. In fact, there's nothing wrong with staying up here if you've got really tight quads. But, yeah, coming back, again, it comes back to it's our functional yin yoga practice, so what's working for us. If we're comfortable here, we may be comfortable lying all the way back. Moving to that first edge in whichever position we're in. 
making our attention to the muscle, relaxing the muscle, feeling the stress move, or allowing it to move to the connective tissue. Maybe we need to adjust. If this isn't enough for us, we can bring this leg up, bend the right leg. We can even drop it out to the, the side. The option's there. And if we need to, we can take the arms above the head. So plenty of options here for however much sensation you need. So just pick what works for you. And again, move to stillness. Bringing our attention inwards. Understanding how we're experiencing the posture. Maybe feeling the stretch or stress in the connective tissue now from the, the quad. Maybe it comes up further through the leg, the hip flexor, into the stomach, flexus abdominis, and maybe even to the obliques at the side of the body. Being aware that we've got some healthy stress here on the bones, right from the toes, ankles, knees, femur, right up to the pelvis, hips, and even the, the lumbar of the back. And just enjoying the, enjoying the silence. just taking the left leg out to the side I'll just turn around to make it easier to see but really just swapping to the other side so now we're taking the, the right leg taking that right leg behind us maybe the quads engaged maybe not coming back to wherever we find our first point of resistance, that edge, relaxing the muscle here in the quad, transferring that stress to the connective tissue, maybe that means we need to adjust, maybe it opens up the body to allow us to go in a little bit deeper, but maybe not on this side. And then we've got the options here with the leg straight, the leg up, leg out to the side, arms up above the head, whatever combination works for you, but never going over that edge, never typically more than 60 to 70 percent of your full range. When we settle, just Finding some stillness, physically and mentally. Just opening the mind. That's just feeling the physical elements of the posture. Connective tissue stretch from the quad, all up that right hand side of the body, maybe. that we're giving the bones of the left leg and hip and some good healthy stress. And maybe as we lie here in stillness, maybe there's a, a more emotional response. Again, if there is, 
That's fine, that's perfectly normal. Just allow it to come and let it go. Breathing steadily and naturally. Just a couple more breaths here. And again, no rush. Just releasing that right leg. And perhaps coming back to lying on your back or maybe supported up on the elbows wherever is just relaxed and comfortable for you so that we can enjoy this rebound listening for the the echo of the posture taking our attention firstly to the, the target area of the quads that we've just worked being aware of any changes in that area, any sensations, but maybe the sensations are more broadly felt, maybe they're felt in the lower body or, or the legs generally. Just start trying to listen to what, if anything, is happening as we come out of these postures. We're almost doing this twice where Trying to open the mind while we're in the posture to understand our body's immediate response. But then we're also doing the same immediately after the posture to understand what the effect was. And maybe now coming up to a seated position ready for the next posture. We're going to be working on the hamstrings at the, the back of the legs. So we're going to do that from this seated posture here. Back straight. Looking forward. And the exhale, we're just going to bring the torso down towards the legs. We can support ourselves with our arm if we need to. We can even bring in the bolster all the pillows if we need to. Again, you're going to be looking for that first point of resistance. Looking for that edge. And when we get there, we pause. Always come to the edge and pause. And as we pause, we take our attention to the target area. So in this case the hamstrings, and we relax the muscles. And we should relax the muscles in all of the legs in this posture, we don't actually need them to support ourselves. Maybe that allows us to come forward a little bit more onto the elbows or some other support. Maybe it allows us to bring the torso a little bit further forward. If we can tilt the pelvis, and the easiest way to do that is to straighten the back a little bit and look forward, we're going to find that there's more stretch and stress, healthy stress, on the hamstrings. And that may be, may be helpful. If it's too much, we can bend the back a little bit and just take the edge off the hamstrings. So again, work within your own capabilities and capacities. Don't be pulling with the hands on the feet. And just find a, a posture that's comfortable for you. Just moving to that stillness. That stillness that allows us to explore the posture. Feeling the connective tissue stretch or stress all at the back of the legs, the hamstrings. Maybe even starting in the in step of the feet, right up the back of the legs, 
and possibly coming up the back as well, up the thrasso lumbar area. Typically quite introverted emotions in these postures, we're not opening the heart, we're closing in. So if you just stay in that posture there for a moment, I'm going to come up but just to explain what we're doing next. So we're working on the hamstrings there. You probably still are if you're in the posture. We're now going to work on the thoraco lumbar. So the area up the, the back, all running up the, the back there. There's two ways we can do this. One is just to continue in the posture that we're in at the moment. So, but in order to get the target area moved from the hamstrings to the back, we don't do it around the back. So before we talked about straightening, straightening the back and tilting the pelvis, now we're going to want to do completely the opposite. So we're going to want to tilt the pelvis back or just round the back. So if you want to stay in this position, that's fine. You can do that. So just round the back and sense the, the movement, the, the reduction in stress in the hamstrings and the increasing in the thoraco lumbar in the back. And if that's the case, just relax, relax the muscles and again move towards that stillness. Some of us may prefer something different, so you may want to Come onto your back and just roll backwards. Be resting the knees on the forehead for a moment. Or taking the feet straight out. Or maybe even dropping the knees on either side of the ears. Entirely up to you. Two options here. You can carry on with the forward fold, or the caterpillar as it's sometimes called, or we can do this roll back, sometimes called the snail. Entirely up to you, wherever you think your capabilities lie, and where you think you're going to get the best stretch in the target area. I'm going to roll out of that simply because it's easier to talk while I'm out of it. But whichever position you're in, hold forward or the roll back, so the caterpillar or the snail. Again, we're, we're finding stillness. Adjusting slightly if required. Always mindful if we need to come out, we can. Opening the mind now to what's happening in the posture, in both or either of the postures. Feeling the stretch in the connective tissue, from the base of the spine, the hips right up the back, up towards the neck. Mindful that if we're in snail and rolled over, we're going to be getting some a lot more stretch and stress at the top of the spine, the cervical spine.
But again, folding forward or rolling back. Much more introverting postures. So maybe there are some different emotions that come out in either of these options. So whichever option you went for, just gently coming out of the posture now again, as always, no rush at all. And, uh, always a good idea to take a little rebound, so just lying on the back or just supporting yourself, listening for that echo. Take the attention to the target area, so the back. Thraso lumbar muscles, or that sort of area. What, if anything, do we feel is different there? Can we feel any sensations? And if we can, how might we describe them to ourselves? important to do this as we go along so that we can try and understand what's happening. Now for our next posture we're going to be working the area of the stomach, the rectus abdominis. We're going to come onto our front. And we're going to start with supporting ourselves on our elbows. Hands out in front, or the arms can be crossed. Again, looking forward, almost as though a chest comes forward. Target area is the rectus abdominis, so the stomach muscles, the front of the body. So as we settle into this posture, we might want to explore with our feet together or apart, whichever is comfortable for you. You don't want to feel any pinching down there at the base of the spine. So we find our edge. Consciously relax the muscles at the front of the body. Maybe that allows the edge to move a little further, so maybe we need to adjust. If we want to, we can bring in the bolster, put ourselves here, otherwise if we want more depth, put ourselves using our arms, and the closer in we bring our arms, the more stress or stretch we're going to feel. So work within your own capabilities, work out where that edge is, and just stay there. You can always come out if we need to, you can always adjust more deeply if we need to, there's no rush. Once we've found that edge and we're comfortable, just find stillness. Explore what's happening in the posture. You know, that connective tissue, stress and stretch all the way up the front of the body. They even come down into the top of the legs, the hip flexors, and from there up the center of the body, maybe all the way up towards the shoulders. We're also going to get some compression in the back, now the base of the spine, the lumbar and the sacrum. If it's uncomfortable, we can try and adjust the feet in or out to suit. But there's nothing wrong with 
compression. So long as it's not painful, that's the key. Uncomfortable is okay, but pain, definitely not okay. Yeah, just a few more breaths here. Even the head can be used to adjust the posture. Again, your own time. Maybe just come down to the elbows first. Then we can take a um, another rebound here. You might just want to lie down. Or roll over onto the back. Entirely up to you. But just take the time to contemplate the sensations that that last posture created. Trying to understand the echo, as it might be called, of the posture. The changes in the body that you might be feeling. And we're all just enjoying the sensation. Enjoying the afterglow, if you like, of that posture. Uh, maybe just another breath or two here. And next we're going to work on the obliques, so the target area is the, the side of the body. And for this we are going to need the bolster, pillows or the, um, the block. Probably more comfortable with bolster or a pillow. And what we're going to do here is we're going to lie across the bolster or some support, placing it about here on the body, and so that we'll be stretching or feeling the target area on this side. So when you're ready and you've got your props to hand, we're going to be on our side, bringing in the bolster. Just adjusting. Here, starting with the legs straight out. Extending the left arm. Firstly, just allowing the body to mould over the shape of the bolster. Same with the right arm. We can we might have the right arm here if we want a little bit more sensation. We can bring the the right arm up. Leg position is entirely up to you. Again, you might want to explore what happens if we have the legs on top of each other, or we have the right or left leg front, so the top leg in front or behind. You'll find that you need to get a different sensation here, particularly in the, the obliques. Again, working towards your edge finding that edge and as we found that edge just pausing releasing any muscular tension we have in this area of the body particularly around the obliques just allowing that to transfer to the connective tissue stillness and using that stillness of the body and the mind to firstly explore physical dimensions of this posture maybe you're going to feel that connective tissue stress in the Obliques. It's also possible that you're going to feel it moving right down the outside of the top leg, right up the side of the body, up through the arms. Just relax. 
relaxing into it. And feel stress stretch. From the tip of your fingers right down to the tip of the toes. A good opener, so don't be surprised. Just the emotions take the opportunity to appear. If they do, just allow them to come to the surface, acknowledge them, and let them pass. Can be quite an intense stretch here. But if you do need to ease off during the posture, feel free, maybe bring the arm back. It's no problem. Be comfortable. Gently supporting yourself it can be quite intense, so just take it very steady. Swapping to the other side. Now we're now going to be placing the bolster under the right hand side and targeting the left hand side of the body. Now again, bolster or other support almost under the ribs here. Extend the legs out to start and just allowing the body to mould itself over the bolster. Each side may be different, so you may find that you want to keep the arm below the shoulder on this side, or you may be comfortable extending it as you did on the other side. Just ensure that you're comfortable. Legs again, maybe experiment with one leg in front of the other and just see what the effect here on the obliques is. Moving towards that edge, that first point of resistance, so not forcing anything. When we're getting there, pausing. relaxing the muscle in the side of the body. So consciously telling the body to relax in that area. Allowing the muscular stress to transfer to the connective tissues. Exactly where we want it in yin yoga. Working with the connective tissues and the fascia that runs throughout the body is the key to ensuring that we have the channels and the, that the chi can flow through the entire body. So this is the key to successful yin practice. It's ensuring that we can achieve that objective of yoga which is harmonizing the flow of chi. And we do that through this healthy stress in the connective tissue and the fascia throughout the body overall. So again here we may find that we feel that wonderful connective tissue stress or stretch from the toe right up to the finger on the left hand side of the body, the upper side of the body. And we may find that this brings some emotions to the fore. 
And again, we're comfortable with that. So let's just enjoy the last 30 seconds or so. Just enjoy the silence. Very gradually. Want to be careful when we come out of it. And maybe if the head's been over that side of the bolster, just want to be mindful that we don't want to be feeling any dizziness. Bring the bolster, or support aside. And just coming back into another rebound. So probably lots of feedback. Maybe lots of feedback here from the body. Some fairly intense stretches on both sides. So again, just opening the mind to what does that feel like now that the posture is over or now that we've come out of it? What does the echo of that posture feel like? Again, is it physical? Is it emotional? Maybe it feels a little bit energetic. Try and describe it to yourself in your own words. And just remember how that feels. Now, for our next posture, we're going to work with the um, scapular clavicle. So we're going to come to lying on our front. And extend the right arm out. And we're going to roll over onto the side. Using the block to support the head if required. And just rolling the body back as far as we're comfortable doing. So we're getting a nice stretch on the, the front of the scapula here. If we want to, we can also bend this leg up just to help get the balance of the body over. And if we're really comfortable, we can even go back and hold those fingers with the other arm. So relaxing the, the muscle in the shoulders, allowing the stress to pass to the connective tissue, wherever we are, maybe here, maybe the arms here. And just finding some stillness, not here for long. Gently removing the block, rolling back onto the front of the body, and just swapping sides. So extending the left arm, we're going to roll back.
pull a header for corner. And just rolling the body back as far as we're comfortable doing so that we're getting a nice stretch. If we want to, we can also bend this leg up to help get the balance of the body over. And if we're really comfortable, we can even go back and hold those fingers with the other arm. Relaxing the shoulders, wherever we are, just finding some stillness. Gently rolling back onto the front of the body. So in the next posture, we're actually going to stay with the clavicle and scapula, but we're going to do it rather than opening out on one side and then the other. We're going to do it with what's called a closed wing. So we're going to have the arms in front of us and underneath us like this, and then swap to the other side and do it this way. So the difference here is that rather than being an opener, what we're going to be opening up, effectively going to be opening up the shoulders. Can you imagine this way, we're going to be opening up this area. So again, it's still the same target area. So we're doing this, we're doing this. This, leaning forward. We come into the mat, crossing, remembering which arms on top of which, so we'll swap it in a couple of minutes. And again, just finding that edge. First point of resistance. Probably find that the shoulder muscles are quite tense. So when we find that edge, taking our attention to the shoulders and consciously telling the body to relax. Relax, you'll feel the shoulder muscles relax. Allowing the stress to pass to the connective tissue. You may even feel the, the shoulders, the shoulder blades opening up. As you do so, if you need to follow the edge, you might want to just push forward with the toes a little bit, and or maybe drop the head towards the mat. Both of which will add a bit more intensity to this posture. Finding some stillness, we're not here for long, maybe another another minute or so. Feeling the connected tissue in the upper body. Stretching and stress nicely. Also some great healthy stress on the bones and the scapula, the clavicle, the humerus and the shoulders.
In very gently. Coming out of that, resting on the shoulders, just swapping the arms over. So whichever arm was in front, take it behind. Then we're going to go down and do exactly the same. Posture. It's effectively swapping the sides of the um, dominant tension in the scapula. Finding that edge, first point of resistance, pausing, relaxing the shoulder muscles. Go to the target area, relax, relax. Adjusting as we need to, if we need to follow the edge, if it's opened up a little bit. Maybe pushing forward with the toes a little bit. Maybe allowing the head to drop towards the mat. Finding some stillness. Enjoying the opening up of the shoulder blades. Feeling the connective tissue. Stretching under stress nicely. Enjoying knowing that we're putting some lovely healthy stress on the bones in the shoulder area, scapula, clavicle, maybe even down into the arm bones. Enjoying that for one or two more breaths. Gently releasing the arms. Either lying down on the front for the rebound or coming onto the back. Just enjoying the after effects, the sensations of the posture. Taking the mind, the attention to that upper body area. We don't work the upper body a lot in yin, so it's, it's interesting when we do to just experience it. Seeing what's changed. Does it feel? And maybe on the next breath, just coming back to seat position, ready for our next posture. So we're going to be using a twist for our next posture. So you may need your bolster for this one or something to lie back onto. Starting from a seated position, we're going to come into what's sometimes called a deer. So we're going to take the right leg back and bring the left leg in, so bending the left leg so that our legs are basically in this position here. And firstly, we're just going to twist. Our target area here is the obliques, maybe the hip flexors, but certainly the obliques, the side of the body, and the twist in the spine. So, for some of us, this is going to be quite sufficient. So, this is um, what's sometimes called a twisted deer. And you can feel quite an intense stretch already here in the obliques in the left hand side of the body as we turn around to the left. We're going to be here for a couple more minutes. 
or if you prefer, and it would be a little bit more intense, we can twist and bring the body down a little bit more. Now what you might find here is that the sensation in the left of the body is often you start to experience it in the right. And depending on how you place the body, we support ourselves on a bolster. In the position of the head can have an effect on what we're feeling, so just explore that. Once we've found our edge, now we just settle in, find some stillness. Some people may want to twist further and go deeper, some people may be able to not utilise the bolster at all and just lie on the mat. So uh, just enjoying the stillness, we can explore the physical dimensions here. Look at our connective tissue all up the right hand side of the body. Deep twist in the spine, in the thoracic spine, in the middle of the spine. Maybe even some compression in the lumbar, depending on the angle of the body. And maybe also the cervical spine, depending which way we have our head. We're going to get some twist in the top of the spine. Just breathing gently, being open to it, enjoying the twist. Gently coming back up, top into the other side. I'm going to bring the right leg in, left leg back. And again, we can simply twist here and stay here. It's two or three minutes. So, providing we're not trying to go too deep, that's okay. And again, already we'll be feeling quite a stretch down the inside here the obliques on the right hand side. Finding that edge, first point of resistance, recognising that you know, what we do with our head position, our torso position is going to affect that. Or maybe we want to twist a little bit more, come down to resting on a bolster or the pillows. Supporting yourself as you need to. Recognising that the position of the head is going to have an effect on the degree of twist. And once we've found that edge, just settling into some stillness. ourselves up to the posture, physical dimension, feeling the connective tissue stretch coming up this upper side of the body now, maybe as far down as the knee right up the side of the body, and the deep twist in the spine, the deep twist in the thoracic spine, Depending on the position of the head, maybe something in the cervical spine, more often than not if we turn the head in, we get more twist there, and certainly some compression down in the lumbar.
Just enjoying the stillness. Okay, very gently. Releasing ourselves, rolling out. Any pulses or blocks aside. Getting ready now for final posture shavasana. So make sure that you're comfortable. Make sure that you're warm. Be a five minute guarded shavasana. So lying on your back, closing the eyes, breathing normally, relaxing, relaxing the body, just getting ready Contemplate and review where we've been over the last 85 minutes or so. From the position we're now in, we have our eyes closed. Breathing regularly. Bring the attention to the mat supporting us. To rely on the mat. Just feeling the support we get from it. And sinking a little bit into the mat. Maybe even sinking a little bit into the earth. The earth there is there supporting us. In the sequence we've worked through the entire body. So I'd like to take our attention to the body. Into the breath. Feeling the breath moving in and out of the nostrils a couple of times. Bring attention to the lower body at the start of the practice. We work with the hip flexors and the glutes with all the bones of the lower body. So take a moment to take our attention to the lower body. And see if we can feel how that might have changed from before the practice. We've applied healthy stress to connective tissues and bones. We've opened up channels or pathways for the chi to flow through the lower body. How does that feel? Can we feel any sensations? Perhaps we can feel the movement of some of that energy. We've also worked a lot on the torso the hips, the obliques, the back. Can we feel or sense any echoes of the postures that we worked through there? Maybe again as well as more relaxed or stretched connective tissue and muscles. Maybe we can feel 
slight energetic movement. Maybe there's a tingle, or just a warmth that we can feel anywhere in the lower body, torso, or the back, maybe even coming up into the upper body. Into the upper body, the neck, the shoulders. Maybe now we can think about the whole body. Sometimes after these practices we can sense almost a gentle hum or vibration. You might wonder what that is. Perhaps if we accept that it is the chi energy moving through our body, we'll understand what a practice like this can do for us. It has a physical dimension. It's certainly good for us to stretch, to apply healthy stress. It's also good for us to allow the vital energy of life to move freely through the body. Just enjoy that the next few breaths. Ready slowly to come out. In your own time, there's no need to leap out in response to it. Just recognize that the practice is over. Gently roll onto one side, maybe push up on one arm, come back to a comfortable seat position. When you're comfortable, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to practice with me today. I hope you've enjoyed the sequence. I hope you'll enjoy the next sequences that we record over the next few weeks. Namaste.